Hey guys, welcome back to my moving declutter series. I think this is the fourth and final installment in my big declutter week. We pretty much made a whole week of it, didn't we? And this is just a catch-all category for anything that we haven't already decluttered. So we're gonna do miscellaneous eye products, lip products, brushes, and nail polishes, I think. So kind of a random catch-all category, but let's go ahead and start with kind of the miscellaneous eye products. This is everything except eyeshadows, basically. I wanna go ahead and start with brow products. I don't have a whole lot here. I do have two brow pomades. Pomades used to be my preferred method of filling in my brows, but these days I cannot get enough of the brow markers. So the Urban Decay Brow Blade is really all I've been using lately. I just, I love this. I feel like I always have a good brow day when I use this. It has a pencil on one side and a marker, like a brush tip pen on the other. So um, this I'm definitely keeping until I use it up. But these two brow pomades, I do have the ABH Dip Brow in the shade Taupe and I still have quite a bit of this left. This will last you forever. I am gonna keep this because I do still like to use a brow pomade from time to time. And I think once this Urban Decay Brow Blade is done, I will probably just buy like a brow marker that doesn't have a pencil on the other end and I'll use the pomade kind of in the tail of my brows the same way that I've been using the pencil side of this for a while. So that will still be useful. This is the e.l.f. Lock-On Liner and Brow Cream in the shade Light Brown. This is honestly a pretty good brow pomade. It's got a good texture. Reminds me a lot of that ABH one. Unfortunately, the color on this one, it looks like a good cool toned light taupey brown, but unfortunately it pulls quite warm and dark in my brows and it just looks a little bit unnatural on me. So this I am going to go ahead and pass on. This can also be used as a liner, but I just prefer pencil liners honestly. So that one I will go ahead and pass on. It still has a lot of life left in it. These two products, the Pacifica Highest Def Hemp Fiber Brow Gel in Clear. This I'm going to just use up. Um, I don't have much left. This is the only brow gel I own, so I am just going to keep that until I use it up. I don't love it though. It's not great. It doesn't really offer much hold. It just kind of allows me to like brush my brows into place, but it, it really doesn't last for very long, so I wouldn't recommend it, but I am just going to use that up. And then the e.l.f. Shape and Stay Brow Pencil. This is a wax, retractable wax, that's actually really nice for pushing the brow hairs into place before applying like a pomade, so I will keep that as well. So for brows, I'm keeping four items and decluttering one, so not too bad considering how small my brow collection is as it is. Next up for mascaras. I do have two mascaras. Both of these are open. I love the Urban Decay Lash Freak. This I have a mini of, and this is pretty much the only one of these two that I've been using. Gives really great length, volume. It makes my lashes look incredible, and it doesn't really transfer on me. Unless I'm like out in the 100 degree weather sweating, I might get a little bit of transfer, but on a regular day, I'm not gonna have a whole lot of transfer with this. So, and this is one of the few mascaras that doesn't transfer on me these days. So that I am gonna keep. This is the Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect, Effect Mascara. I, I never declutter mascaras. Like I always keep them until I've used them for three to six months. This mascara transfers so badly. Like it doesn't even matter what I'm doing. I can just be sitting inside all day and it will smudge, even if I only put it on my top lashes. And I, it's a shame because I really do like the way that this makes my lashes look and I haven't even used this that much, but if I weren't about to move, I would probably keep this and just keep using it on days where like I don't care if I get transfer, but if this were me like a year ago, I probably would have kept this and just forced myself to use it even though I don't like it, <laughs> but um, I think I actually am going to just declutter this. I don't think it makes sense to pack this and take with me. So that mascara is going to go and I will keep the Urban Decay Lash Freak until I use it up completely. I do have my eye primer category. I don't think I'm going to get rid of any of these. Again, this is a very small, manageable category. I have my NYX Jumbo Pencil in Milk. Makes a great white base for pastel eyeshadows. NYX Glitter Primer makes a great tacky base under shimmers. Really helps them pop. And then I have two kind of regular eye lid primers, the Urban Decay Primer Potion and the CoverGirl Lid Lockup Primer. CoverGirl Lid Lockup is still pretty full, so this is the one that I'll move on to 
once I'm done with the Urban Decay. The Urban Decay Primer Potion, I'm actually thinking this is like, you can tell this is so close to being done. I'm really having to like squeeze to get anything out of there. Actually, this might just be the one that I keep in my makeup bag because I definitely have enough left to get me through the next like couple of weeks and then I'll probably call it empty from there. But yeah, that's my primer category. I'm just gonna go ahead and hold on to all of those for now. All right, eyeliners. These are all of my liners. I have a lot of these. I've definitely been on a bit of an eyeliner kick recently. I just, I don't know, I just love them. So nice thing about eyeliners is they don't take up a whole lot of space. So I don't mind keeping most of these, but I do have a couple of kind of duplicate shades in here. I have two black pencil liners the Marc Jacobs Highliner and the CoverGirl Exhibitionist 24 Hour Coal Eyeliner in black. This Marc Jacobs one is very, very stiff and I don't think it's supposed to be that stiff. So I think I am just going to go ahead and declutter this one. I think it's probably just gotten too old. I think I probably got an old batch to begin with because Marc Jacobs did go out of business. So I don't need to have two black pencils. So I'm just gonna keep the CoverGirl one, which I already know I really like and get rid of the Marc Jacobs. As far as liquid liners, I'm gonna keep all of these because these are all different colors. I have my Revolution eyeliner in sky blue, really pretty blue color. My NYX Vivid Brights in Vivid Halo, a pastel yellow, that's a fun one. And then I have a brown and a black, the Flower Foreverwear winged liner in dark and stormy and the Essence 24 Ever ink liner in intense black. So I always like to have one brown liquid liner and one black liquid liner, so I'm gonna keep both of those. I do have another, let's see, these are another couple of duplicate shades. I didn't even realize this when I bought this LA Girl one. I bought it thinking I didn't have anything like this, but I totally already had a royal blue in my collection, so that was my bad, but I try not to make purchases like that, but this is, so that's the LA Girl Precision Liner in the shade Cobalt. And then this is the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide-On Liner in Roxy. They aren't exactly the same, and the Urban Decay one is metallic, whereas the um, LA Girl one is matte. So they're not completely the same. But I've mentioned before, I really don't like this LA Girl formula, this per Perfect Precision Eyeliner. It's just very stiff. It kind of just feels like I'm tr drawing a colored pencil onto my eye. So it is not a very comfortable experience. The Urban Decay one is a lot creamier, just glides on better, has slightly better staying power as well. So I'm going to keep the Urban Decay one and pass on the LA Girl. The rest of these are all different colored pencil eyeliners. Um, I have four of the NYX Epic Wear liner sticks. I love these. These are some of the longest wearing pencil eyeliners you'll find at the drugstore or at any price point, honestly. And I, yeah, I love them. I have four colors of that, so I'm going to keep that. I also have four colors of the CoverGirl Perfect Point Plus liners. I love these for a nice, thin, very easy to use pencil. I have Espresso, Gray Khaki, Charcoal, and Midnight Blue. So those are four different colors, all of which I will use. Another one of the Urban Decay Glide on Eye Pencils in Overdrive. Love this one, especially in the winter. I just love that evergreen color. And then this is more of an eyeshadow stick, but I store it with my liners because it's in a stick form. This is the Urban Decay eyeshadow stick in the shade Fishbowl. I've actually been really enjoying this lately. I definitely don't think this is a must-have formula or anything, but I just really like the color. It's just something a little bit different. I do love pops of blue <laughs> eyeliner, so um, I am going to keep that. It's a really cute color. So keeping 16 eyeliners and getting rid of two. I do have some false lashes. I don't wear false lashes often at all. But I do have one lash glue, the Duo lash glue. I'm going to go ahead and keep that. Um, these were all sent from Ardell, these Eco Lashes. I kind of do want to keep... Eventually, I do want to play around with false lashes. I just kind of haven't gotten around to it. So one pair I know I'll never wear is this one. This is the 445s. These are just so fluffy. Just a little bit, I think, too large for my eyes. So uh, I am going to go ahead and pass those on. Then I have these four others. Um, you know, I do want to keep some of these because I eventually do want to play around with false lashes. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. This pair I've had for a long time, still haven't worn them. I think these are like the Wispies or something. They're like the Ardell 174s. Pretty sure they're Wispies. I don't have the actual name of them anymore. And then the three, three more of the Eco Lashes. These three all look like styles I would definitely wear. These, I think I can let go of these. These are the 453s. I don't know if I would like how 
kind of segmented and clumpy these are. I'm not sure. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pass this on as well. I mean, just how often I wear lashes, I don't need to <laughs> keep all of these, but I do wanna keep these three. These all look a little bit more natural, like styles I would wear, and these are very lightweight, so I'll keep these. So that's all the eye stuff I'm getting rid of there. Not a ton, but you know, it's a decent little amount. All right, so next up for the lip category, if you guys remember, not even two months ago, I think, I did a big lipstick declutter, so, my lipstick collection is already pretty much pared down. I probably won't get rid of anything else because I already decluttered that category. Um, I do, however, want to take a look at my lip glosses. That's in this basket here. Actually, let me just quickly leaf through these lipsticks and just see if there's anything I would want to part with. I really don't think so. I think all of these are very well thought out. There's Okay, yeah, I'm not gonna get rid of any of my lipsticks. If you guys wanna see that lipstick declutter, I tried all of my lipsticks on and narrowed it down from there. So I'll leave that linked below. But yeah, this collection is already very curated and I already am happy with it. So that is done. I do wanna look at my lip glosses though because I haven't decluttered this category in a while. Let's just take all of these out. I just wanna kinda compare similar colors to one another so that I'm not keeping any shades that are too similar. These two are really similar. This is the e.l.f. Lip Plumping Gloss in Champagne Glam and the e.l.f. Lip Lacquer in Fantasy. These are almost identical colors, as you can see. They're both kind of champagne colored with like little bits of shimmer throughout. I do prefer the e.l.f. Lip Plumping Gloss formula over the Lip Lacquer. The Lip Lacquer is a few dollars cheaper than the Plumping Gloss. This right here is the Lip Lacquer, and then this one down here is the Lip Plumping Gloss. You can kind of see, the Lip Plumping Gloss just has a little bit more oomph to it, a little bit more shine, it's a little bit thicker, and it has better staying power. So I'm gonna keep the Lip Plumping Gloss and pass on the Lip Lacquer. They're both nice, I just don't need to keep two of virtually the same color. Another one that I don't actually have any duplicates of this shade in here, but this is the Estate Lip Icing in the shade Glazed. This is a nice shade. This is kind of a more brownish colored lip gloss. I used this in my full face of my least used products. And obviously it is one of my least used products since I used it in that video. I always forget about this gloss. I do kind of like the formula. It does have a little bit of a sheen to it that I feel like gives it a bit of a 90s vibe, if you know what I mean. Not necessarily bad. The thing with this that I really don't care for is the smell and taste. It kind of has this like plasticky taste to it that I just really don't enjoy. It kind of makes me not want to wear it. So I think I am going to go ahead and pass this on. I just don't, my, I don't see myself ever really caring to use this up. These are both kind of clear glosses. I know this one looks pink, but it really does go on clear. It's the Undone Big Papa Gloss in Watercolor Rose. You can see I've actually already used quite a bit of this. I really like this. This almost is feels kind of like a lip balm to me. But um, yeah, it also serves as a nice clear lip gloss. So that I am gonna keep. And then the Bite Yay Sayer Gloss in Sugar Drizzle is a clear gloss with a little bit of a gold shimmer to it. This I do wanna keep as well and use up. You can see I've already used up a good bit of that. So those two I am gonna keep. This is the Urban Decay Plumping Shine Balm in the shade My Dude. Actually really liking this color for the summertime. You can see it's kind of like a sheer coral and I just I really like that color for the summertime so I am going to keep that I don't have anything else like that these two are really similar I'm also realizing these are both like nude pinky colors let me swatch these and just see if I want to keep them both we have the nude by nature gloss in tea rose and the tower 28 gloss in pistachio I just bought this one this one I'm definitely not getting rid of so there's those two, that's Tower 28 Pistachio and that's Nude by Nature Tea Rose. This is my most worn color of gloss, this kind of light pink nude. I am gonna go ahead and keep both of these because they're different enough and I know I use this kind of color all the time. So yeah, I'll go ahead and keep those. This Capari Lip Glossy kind of snuck in here. This is birthday suit, this is more of a tinted lip balm. Um, this is like the kind of nude pink colored one. Um, I am going to keep that. I love the Kopari Lip Glossies. And the e.l.f. Glossy Lip Stain in Coral Cutie. I've said before, I don't think this is that great of a lip stain because the stain doesn't really last very long. But I still really enjoy this for the summer. It's a really nice kind of sheer orange. 
and it has this kind of cooling sensation to it that's just really refreshing. So I, I am gonna keep that even though it's not the best lip stain. I still find it fun to wear. So these are the glosses I'm keeping slash one kind of tinted lip balm that got thrown in here. So keeping eight and passing on two. All right, lip liners. Same thing with this. I'm just gonna kind of look at similar colors together. Like I'm gonna take a look at all of my nude colors first. So let me do peachy nudes first. This is Mented Peach. I love this one. This is BK Beauty Warm Spice. Also have Koki Warm Nude. Another one that I love so, so much. I know these look similar, but on the lips, I swear these all have such a different effect. So keep that in mind. And then I have Koki Nude, which is more of like a brownish tan. Oh, I love that one. And then this is the Essence Soft and Precise Lip Pencil in Happy. That one's a little bit brighter than these others. That one actually might be better to do in the pink category. Let's see. Then I have Urban Decay Manic. It's that one. Koki Dusty Rose. And BK Beauty pink lady. So those are all of my more nude lip liners. One of these that I feel like I can let go of, this is the shade pink lady from BK Beauty. Um, this is just so pink. I don't, I really don't often wear shades that are this pink on my lips, especially not mid-tone pinks like that. I think if anything, if I'm going to wear like a light pink nude lipstick, I'm going to pair it with a more brownish lip liner. So I think this one is one that I wouldn't mind parting with. I'm going to go ahead and pass that one on. All of these others I really do like and use. And I know a lot of these all look kind of like a dusty nude, but I'm telling you, even though they all are kind of similar looking on my hand, on my lips they all pull a little bit differently and I really do use them all. So I don't really see the point in decluttering any of the rest of these. By the way, the Koki lip liners are the best lip liners on earth. Like these, these are really all you need. Like if I could only own one brand of lip liners, it would be this one because these do not budge. Like you'll see in a second when I wipe off these swatches, the Koki ones are gonna be stuck on there. So love those. And then we have my more bold lip liner colors. I have a pink and a red. These two I'm gonna keep because I just have one of each of those types of colors. That's Koki True Red and Bright Fuchsia. And these last two are both kind of deep, vampy, plummy colors. This is BK Beauty Alter Ego. And then I have Koki Plum Purple. These are pretty similar. They do have different undertones. The BK Beauty one is more red and the Koki one is more of like a plummy purple. Um, I think I am just going to keep the Koki one because I just, I don't wear super vampy colors like this very often. And I do actually like the Koki formula a little bit better. It's just a little bit more long lasting. The BK formula is nice also. It's just more of like your standard lip liner formula. So I'm going to keep the Koki plum purple and pass on the BK Beauty Alter Ego shade. All right. So for my lip liners, I am keeping... 10 and passing on two. All right, next up, I do wanna take a look at my brushes. These are all of my brushes here in this holder. Um, I think I am gonna keep this holder because I love this for organizing brushes. It spins, as you can see, as I'm having way too much fun with it right now. But let's go ahead and kind of go category by category. We'll start with like powder brushes and kind of go from there. All right, so these are all my powder brushes, various shapes and sizes here. I will say my BK Beauty brushes are my all-time favorite, so I doubt I'm going to get rid of very many of those, if any. Um, this is the 105. It's a nice kind of really round dense. It's almost like a big kabuki brush. Really good for powder, um, powder foundation, I imagine this would be really good for, so I'm keeping that. This one from Sigma, I actually really don't like this one from Sigma. Sigma, this is their large powder brush, the F30. I don't really like Sigma brushes. Some of them are good, like some of them I do enjoy, but there's something about the bristles that's almost like too synthetic feeling. It feels very, they feel heavy and plasticky to me, I don't know. And this powder brush somehow, I just feel like it doesn't do a very good job packing on the powder. I don't feel like I get an even application with this. And I also feel like it can kind of like pick up my foundation underneath. It's weird. I just, yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not on team Sigma, to be honest. I do have some brushes from them that I like, but 
I just think BK Beauty is worlds better. So I think I actually am going to pass on this Sigma brush. I just, I never use it. I always like, whenever I force myself to use it, I'm like, ew, I don't like this. It's weird. I, I don't usually have such a visceral reaction to brushes, but yeah, I don't know. I do have four like setting the under eye brushes. I have the e.l.f. highlighter brush. This I use all the time for setting the under eyes. It's the perfect shape. Real Technique setting brush. I used to use for highlighter, but now I have a highlighter brush I like better, the e.l.f. Precision Feather Light highlighter brush. So this I occasionally use for setting the under eyes, but I kind of prefer these other three brushes for that. And I don't think I need four under eye setting brushes, so I think I am also going to pass on this Real Techniques setting brush. I used to love this so much, but I just don't really use it much anymore. And then I have the Sigma Tapered Highlighter F35. This I do like. This one I like better than the Big Powder Brush. And then the BK Beauty 108. I use all of these kind of interchangeably, and it's nice to have a few for when one is dirty. So I'm going to keep those because I use that type of brush every day. The rest of these four brushes, these two are nice kind of like tapered egg-shaped brushes. The BK Beauty 102 and 104. I really like both of these. I use them for all kinds of things. This 102 I mainly use for like dusting off fallout from my cheeks. Great size and like density for that. And this one I like for bronzer, blush, powder, just all kinds of things. So I'm going to keep both of those. I think I'm going to keep both of these as well. I have this Profusion powder brush. Just a good basic all-purpose face powder brush. And the BK Beauty 103. These are really the three brushes I would use for applying setting powder to my face. And again, I think I like, I think three is a good number for me to have of each type of brush, just because I do like to not wash my brushes. <laughs> so um, it's good to have some, you know, ones to rotate through for when other ones are dirty. Keeping those and passing on two. I'm not expecting to get rid of a crazy amount of brushes because I do, I don't know, I'm happy with a lot of these, but these are brushes that I would use for applying either foundation, concealer, or cream cheek products. I kind of use those types of brushes interchangeably. These two I'm not getting rid of, the BK Beauty 101 and 106. I love both of these for either foundation or cream contour, cream bronzer, cream blush, all of that. These are some of my most used brushes. These two are also good for applying foundation, the Sigma Flat Kabuki and the e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush. Both of these are really good. And the e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush I also use for cream cheek products. And the Sigma Flat Kabuki, this is one of the Sigma ones I do like. This is good for foundation, doesn't get too streaky. So keeping both of those, let's see. I have this, this is the Angie Hot and Flashy with BK Beauty A506. Love this for concealer. This is the best concealer brush ever. And I love this shape. Really nice slant to it. This is the Sigma Soft Blend Concealer Brush. Do I want to keep this? I don't like this for concealer. I much prefer that um, A506 there. Shape is just not quite right for concealer. I have used this to apply like cream highlight, but I feel like I have other brushes that could do that. Or I could just use my finger or a sponge. I just don't find this one all that useful, honestly. So. I think I'm also going to pass on this Sigma one. There was a time when I probably would have kept these because, you know, they're expensive and nice and Sigma's really popular, so I should keep them. But if I'm not using them, it doesn't really matter. Like, I'd rather give them to someone else who might like them more. I mean, they are nice brushes. They're nice and heavy, well made, but I just don't, I, I have others I prefer over it. Then I have two of these kind of angled brushes. These are really good for cream contour and bronzer blush as well. The Profusion Contour Brush and the Angie Hot and Flashy A507. I think I'm going to keep the Angie Hot and Flashy and pass on this Profusion Contour Brush. This one's been nice, but I just, I have plenty of other brushes that I can use <laughs> to apply cream cheek products, as you can see right here. So let's do that. Now I have brushes that I would use for powder, blush, bronzer, and highlight. Um, this one I love. This is my favorite blush brush, the BH Cosmetics V2. I love how like fluffy and tapered this one is, keeping for sure. Also definitely not getting rid of my e.l.f. Precision Feather Light Highlighter Brush. I use this for highlighter every day. It is the perfect, nice and kind of floppy, fluffy highlight brush. It gives a great diffused application, keeping that. Um, I think I can go ahead and let go of this one from EcoTools. This is the EcoTools Precision Blush Brush. I used this blush brush daily for years, but I just prefer something a little bit bigger and fluffier now. This one is just a little bit too dense, I think, for what I prefer these days, and I just don't really use it anymore. I'm always using this one, or sometimes I'll use this e.l.f. Flawless Face Brush, but I really never use this EcoTools one anymore. But it's still in good shape, so I do want to go ahead and pass that on. 
This is the Eco Tools full powder brush, really big brush that I like to use for bronzer. I love big bronzer brushes these days. I just find them so satisfying to use. So that one will keep. Then we have another angled brush for blush, bronzer, highlight. This is the Sigma Large Angled Contour. Another one from Sigma that I never ever use. You can see, I think I used this once when I had like no other brushes or like all my brushes were dirty, so I had to use this, but I don't know. I think it's very telling that I just, I feel like I've used this maybe, maybe five times <laughs> since I've owned it for the last like year and a half. So once again, I think someone will be really happy to have these Sigma brushes, but I just, it makes me sad to just keep them collecting dust in my collection. The BK Beauty 107, I'm gonna keep this. This is a nice small brush. I do, if I'm gonna use a smaller blush brush, I like this one better than the Eco Tools because it's just a little bit less dense. So I'll keep that. And then the e.l.f. Flawless Face Brush is another good kind of backup blush brush to have. So keeping those. All right, so the last category is eye brushes here. I do have some miscellaneous tools, my brow scissors, my tweezers, and my spoolie. These three, I'm gonna keep, those are commonly used by me. All right, let's further narrow these down. I'm gonna do like shader brushes first. All right, shader brushes. Wow, this is, this is a lot. <sighs> okay, so one I'm definitely keeping, this is the Real Techniques shader brush. This one I use actually for the outer corner. It's a great brush for that. Definitely keeping that. I love my e.l.f. shader brushes. I'm also keeping these. These are like two bucks. Really good shader brushes. Can't go wrong with those. Okay, this is a kind of brush that I really don't use often. These are kind of like your really flat concealer brushes. They can also be used as an eyeshadow brush or to cut the crease. I have the MOTD Under the Covers and the BK Angie Hot & Flashy A505. I think I will keep the BK one. As you guys know, these are just my favorite brushes, and I'll go ahead and pass on the MOTD under the covers, because I just don't need two of a very similar brush like this. All right, here are three from BK Beauty. This is a nice, another nice shader brush. This is the 203. It's a little bit fluffier than like the e.l.f. ones, but I really like that shape. It's nice because you can pack on a shadow on your lid and then kind of blend it out, because it is a little bit fluffy, so I'm going to keep that. This is like a slightly larger version of that, the a, the the 206. And then the Angie A501, this is pretty similar to the 206. I think I slightly prefer the 206 just because it's a little more tapered. So I think I will go ahead and pass on the A501 and keep the 206. And then this is a Real Techniques base shadow brush. This is a good like fluffy shader brush, another good one for like a one and done shadow because you can pack with this and blend. And then this is a super old Eco Tools brush. This is the shade brush from a set that I bought about 12 years ago. <laughs> I can't bring myself to get rid of this Eco Tools one. I think I'm just going to keep it until it absolutely dies. One of my Eco Tools brushes from this set did finally die recently, so I'm sure it's only a matter of time with this one, but I don't know. I just it's like a vintage item, so I can't get rid of it. <laughs> so, from the shader brush category, I'm keeping 8 and passing on two. Seems to be the ratio. I, I seem to be decluttering about 20%, which is pretty good. I do have two angled brushes here, the BK208 Best Angled Liner Brush of All Time and the Profusion Angled Brow Brush. The Profusion one you can see is a little bit larger than the BK Beauty one. I just find it a little difficult to work with. This BK one is so precise. This one's just a little bit too thick and I find it hard to get a precise line. So I think I am gonna go ahead and pass on this Profusion one and keep the BK. All right, let's tackle my small crease brush category. Okay, I have four kind of small crease brushes. These are really small compared to like, this is more of a fluffy crease brush. You can see these are kind of your mini detail crease brushes. I really like having brushes like this and I just realized, wow, these are very similar. These two are from Angie Hot and Flashy, the A502 and A504, and these are from e.l.f. This is their crease brush and deluxe crease brush. Um, I think I'm just going to keep the BK and pass on the e.l.f. These e.l.f. ones are getting kind of old. It, the ferrules are a little loose, as often happens with e.l.f. brushes, unfortunately. So um, I've had these for quite a few years now, so I think they're kind of on their last leg anyway. And I'll go ahead and keep these BK ones because they're just kind of like the nicer quality version of these e.l.f. ones. These e.l.f. ones are not bad, though. If you're on a budget, these are really nice. 
They just won't last you, you know, 10 plus years. All right, then we have kind of more of your fluffier crease brushes, your standard sized crease brushes. I do have, I use this kind of brush all the time, so I like having variety here. Let's see, I have two from BH Cosmetics, the V5 and the Studio Pro 5. These are very similar in shape. For some reason, I find the Studio Pro 5 to be just a little bit too stiff for my liking. Whereas this one, I like it's like a little bit softer. So I'm going to keep the V5. Is that what it's called? Yeah, V5. So I'm going to keep the V5 and pass on the Studio Pro. Then the rest of these four, I think I will go ahead and keep. I use, like I said, I use these brushes all the time. So it's nice to have several so that when one or two are dirty, I still have some others to rotate through. I have the MOTD Seamless Sheer Blend. Just a great fluffy crease brush. Great for just laying down your transition color. And these two from BK Beauty, the 201 and the 202. The 201 is a little fluffier, really similar to the MOTD. And then the 202 is a little bit smaller, more tapered. It's good for getting a little bit more of a targeted crease application. And then the Angie A503, pretty similar to the MOTD and the 201, but just like a little bit longer. So I do use all of those, so I'm just gonna keep them all. So these are all of my crease brushes. I'm keeping seven and passing on three. So a good 30% decluttered there. All right, then we have just kind of miscellaneous brushes. I have two really small detail brushes that I like to use for the inner corner. The Sigma E30 pencil, I actually do really like this one for the inner corner, just good small pencil brush. And the EcoTool smudge brush, also good for that same purpose, so I'm gonna keep both of those. This is my only like really small dense smudge brush. I like that for smudging shadow on the lower lash line, that's the BK204. Oh wait, I accidentally put these in the declutter pile, keeping those two. Um, and then keeping that smudge brush. Let's see, I feel like I can finally part with this one. This is the Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush. They call it a crease brush. It's really like a very dense domed brush. I've actually used this for concealer before. It's just a little bit, I'm really picky about my concealer brushes. I hardly ever use brushes for concealer. This one is no exception. It's also good for blending out cream shadows, but I have other brushes that I can use for that. Like, yeah, I just don't think this is getting enough use from me, so I'm gonna pass that one on. And these three I am gonna keep. I have two kind of like fluffy angled brushes. These are good for a lot of things. This is another one from that ancient Eco Tool set. Love this, still use it almost daily for the brow bone. This is another similar one from BK. It's their 205, really use it for the same purpose. And then this is the BK Beauty 207. It's the only like really small, not quite crease brush, not quite pencil brush. I also really like this for packing shadows in the outer corner. So those three I'm gonna keep as well. So the final, final count, let me actually count up exactly how many brushes I'm keeping versus decluttering here. All right, so the final count, I'm keeping a total of 43 brushes. That's all of these right here. And that includes my like, little spoolie too, decluttering 13. So that means I decluttered about 23% of my brushes, which is good. This is a nice little chunk that I am not gonna be transporting with me. All right guys, so the final category that we're gonna go through today is nail polishes. It's been a while since I've decluttered my nail polishes and I really only wear nail polishes on my toes now. I really, I just don't use nail polish that often. So I wanna be pretty ruthless here. I think I probably only wanna keep like maybe five to 10, maybe, but really closer to five would be ideal. So let's just dig right in. This one I already know. This is the Elamila In A Rush top coat. This is completely goopy and way too thick to be used now. So last time I used it, it was just like so streaky and thick on my nails, it was awful. So that one, it's just, I've already used like half of it up. It's just gonna have to go. This is a cuticle oil. I never use cuticle oil, it's from Jordana. Um, their cuticle oil and nail conditioner. I'm just gonna pass it on, I never use that. I feel like I'm pretty lucky with my cuticles and I'm also pretty good about not messing with them. I know some people have like a nervous habit of chewing their cuticles. I chew the inside of my cheeks, that's my vice. So my, luckily my nails, I don't really chew. The Orly Bonder base coat and the top to bottom. This is a base and top coat. So I think I really just need this and nothing else in the way of base and top coats. So th I think I'll go ahead and pass on the Bonder. This is pretty old, although I think it is still working well. So somebody can use that, but I think I really only need to keep one, so keep the top to bottom, pass that on. So from here, let me go ahead and pick out the shades that I know I want to keep, like my favorite shades. This is one of my favorites ever, the Jordana Great to Wear, G-R-E-Y-T, weird name. But this is the most perfect nude 
light taupe color ever. I love this. I actually currently have this on my toes. It's really pretty. That I want to keep. I also absolutely love this royal blue. You guys know me. I'm a sucker for <laughs> this kind of color. This is the shade Blue Phantom from Jordana. Jordana had some really good nail polish colors back in the day. Let's see. Other colors that I like do not want to part with. Um, I really like neutral nail colors the most. So one that I do want to keep, this is the, let me make sure this is not like too thick now though. No, this is from Wet n Wild. Wet n Wild's no longer cruelty free, but this is their Mega Last in the shade Wet Cement. Classic taupe color. It's a little bit deeper than the Jordana one. I love both of these keeping. Let's see. I also love this light sky blue. This is the Wet n Wild Mega Last one in Wear Skinny Jeans. Just double check, make sure it's not too thick. Yeah, that looks fine. That'll keep. I also love this one. This is the shade I Need a Refreshment from Wet n Wild. I've had this for so long, like probably 10 years, but it's still, it still seems to be in decent shape. I think I'm gonna keep that one as well. I just, I love pastel blues and these are pretty different. This one's more minty. This one's more of like a baby blue. Can you tell I have a favorite color. Let's pick out some now that I don't mind getting rid of. All of these. Really not a big pink, red, or purple fan when it comes to nail polishes. Just don't really wear them. I think all of these I can go ahead and declutter. We have Wet n Wild Undercover. It's just a little bit too pink. I don't know. I just don't love it. I really don't wear red nail polish as much as I used to. This is the shade Cherry from Jordana and the shade Fascinated with Red. Both of these are, this one is more of like a true cherry red and this one's a little bit vampier. I mean, actually I might keep the vampier red because this is a nice fall red. I'm going to potentially keep that for now, but that one, the bright red, I can get rid of. Another like mauve pink I'm just not loving. This is Pacifica Raspberry Beret. This looks very separated. I think it's fine though. Yeah, that's totally fine. It's not very old. Um, that one's like a little bit more berry-ish than the Wet n Wild one, but I just don't really wear it. And then these three purples, I also just don't really wear. This is Wet n Wild Grape Mines Think Alike. <laughs> kind of similar to that Pacifica one, just very berry-y. Pacifica Lotus, like a dark purple, and Wet n Wild on a Trip. I have a periwinkle. Actually, ooh, that's a pretty periwinkle. Uh, you know what? No, I think it's a little bit too dark. If I'm going to wear a periwinkle, it's going to be more pastel than this. So yeah, all six of these I'm going to go ahead and pass on. Just don't see them getting enough use from me. Another blue I do want to keep. This is Wet n Wild Navy Intelligence. It's a navy blue. I just, I can't pass up this gorgeous, like deep, deep midnight blue. That's stunning. This one I can let go of. This is the Elf Nail Polish in the shade Sea Escape. This is unfortunate. This one is really pretty. You can see it has kind of like an iridescent blurple <laughs> shift to it but this chips in under 24 hours like even if you've got a good base and top coat on it still chips in two seconds so i have no patience for that okay these two greens are so similar i don't know how this happened i think they looked different online when i ordered them these are both from pacifica we have london tomboy and psychedelic jungle Ooh, what fun colors i think i'm gonna keep london tomboy because it's a little bit more tealy and you guys know about my love for teal and this is more of like a grass grassy green. Um, I think I can let go of that. I just don't think I need to keep both of these and I do prefer London Tomboy. All right, we're making good progress. This is a pretty color. This is a copper. Really nice. Needs to be shaken, but um, that's really pretty. That's Pacifica Hustle. I will keep that because that is a gorgeous copper. It's so dimensional. Look at that. All right, this is a baby pink. This is Jordana's Ballerina Pink. Baby pinks are so hard. I think these must be tough for brands to formulate because they're always so streaky. This one is no exception. It's just, I don't know, it's it's always a little bit too streaky and a little bit not opaque enough. And I think the color is just a little bit too close to my skin tone. I think I much prefer like a more of a nude taupe over a nude pink, so I'm gonna pass that on. This one's pretty. This is, it's kind of separated, but it's really like a soft blue-gray. This is Pacifica Chance of Clouds. I think I have to keep that. I mean, wait, okay, let's compare, let's compare. I'm already keeping these other two light blues. Uh, you know, I think I should decide between this and the Wet n Wild I Need a Refreshment one, because those are 
quite similar. Considering that I mainly wear nail polish on my toes, I think I prefer the slightly more bluish one, the little bit more colorful one over this really, really light one. So I'm gonna pass on that Pacifica one and keep the wet and wild. All right, getting down to the end here. This one, this is another blue, which you know I have a hard time letting go of blues. This is Sonia Kashuk Rain Check. And then I also have another one from Sonia Kashuk. This is the shade French Macaron. Oh, how cute are those? Okay, Rain Check I think is similar enough to the Jordana uh, Blue Phantom shade. And I do like the Jordana one a little bit more. So I'm gonna keep the Jordana and pass on the Sonia Kashuk. I don't even remember the last time I used this one. I do, however, I think I will keep this pastel lavender from Sonia Kasha because that's just really pretty and I don't have any other shades like that. Um, I think I will keep the Jordana fascinated with red color because it looks pretty red in the bottle. It, it dries down a little bit darker than this, so it just makes for a really nice vampy fall color. And I don't have any other, as you can see, I'm not keeping any other reds yet so I would like to keep just one red and then I have a black and a gold this is the Orly breathable one step manicure in the shade mind over matter I think I have to keep the black I actually haven't even had this one that long but I mean you gotta have a black nail polish this is from the brand mineral fusion and it's the shade gold rush Ooh, I do really like this one this is a really pretty like champagne -y gold let me see how many I'm keeping one two two four six, eight, ten. Ooh, I'm already keeping 11 plus a base and top coat. Um, that's 12 right there. If I were to keep the gold, that I would be keeping 12. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and keep these 12 because I really do like all of these colors. I don't think there's really any overlap here. Okay, so final results of the nail polish. This is good. I am keeping... 12 colors plus one base and top coat, and I am passing on three, six, nine, eleven colors, two kind of clear coats, and one cuticle oil. So, wow, I basically cut my nail polish collection in half. I was hoping to cut it down even more, honestly, but I mean, looking at all these colors, I just feel like this is a great little nail polish collection. So, I'm happy with those. And I'm happy to be letting go of those. So you guys, I think that does it for my gigantic pre-move declutter series. That was part four. I will leave the previous three parts linked down below. I've done base products, cheek products, and palettes already. So this I think will be the last one. Stay tuned, I do have a moving vlog coming up where I'm gonna be packing my makeup so you get to see that in action. And I also have an upcoming pack with me where I'm gonna show the makeup I decided to keep in my makeup bag throughout the move, the makeup that I'm not packing away. So I hope you guys enjoyed this declutter series. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you've not already. I'd love to see you again soon. And hopefully I will talk to you very soon in my next video. Bye.